Monday motivation. What a great day <laughs> to be here yes. on a Monday, right, it, Corinne? It is great, a great, great, great Monday. I can feel it in my bones. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, not sure if the title's on here right now, but we're going to keep going with it. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome. It is our first Monday back since, since convention, convention which was huge. And uh, we just want to say, uh, I, I know for me, for our, our team, I think we're so grateful for every one of you oh, who helped to, uh, you brought your, your mm -hmm. groups, you uh, helped lead workshops, yep. like everyone really, you stepped in and uh, I think it was, it was great. Yeah, no, it was yeah. a great time. So yeah. thanks for bringing your crew. Yes. So, so how was your weekend, Corinne? My weekend? was interesting really let what me happened? tell you a quick, Please tell a quick us. story while we get more people yes. on here uh so i my brother uh has a lot of friends and one of his friends was opening uh for josh garrels who some of you may or may not know and so he was like i want to go support her at her show it was a big dream mm -hmm. we're gonna go to lexington to this show and like my first thought is Lexington, Virginia, you know? Of course. Well, that's so, who he would ever think up, otherwise. He shows up with his RV, first of all. <laughs> We're taking an RV to this show because you couldn't get an Airbnb. And he was in charge because I was doing convention, yes. right? And he shows up in his RV and he's like, let's go. And he puts in the GPS Lexington, Virginia. Hold I mean, on. Lexington, go ahead. Kentucky. So you didn't know even up to the point of up you walking until in. until <laughs> I got into the RV and he puts the address in the thing. So you thought you were going to Virginia. And I went to Kentucky. A <laughs> whole awesome. entire eight hours each direction <laughs> to go to one concert one night. Uh, what a great move, Corinne. You know what? <laughs> it was a nice little sibling bonding time. There you go. We had a great time. Great memory. Yeah, what about you? Yes. So uh, <laughs> I was out at Wrightsville on Thursday yes. with that awesome crew there at Wrightsville. Um, and then Sunday, had the opportunity to be in Delaware. Wow. Um, with a uh, real life community with Pastor D and then Carissa, the youth pastor. So Sweet. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good time. Yeah. A lot of fun. So very, very But I did have a relaxing Saturday. So that was important. That's good. So, yeah. So. You know what? So did I. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Woo! But yeah. We, have a, we have a bunch of announcements. We do. We'll get to real fast. Woo! And then we have a guest with us to, to share with you this morning. Um, first off, we have Thrive. Thrive is coming up next week, <laughs> next friends. Week. Next week. This time next week, we'll be en route to Thrive. That's right. Well, That's we'll right. already be there. You'll be en route. Yes. And hopefully yes. you guys are joining us there at Thrive. Um, it's Monday through Wednesday. Through so. Wednesday morning. Yeah. And there's also a youth pastors and under 40 gathering, gathering. that will be happening over Thrive. So if you're going to Thrive, make sure you check out the schedule for that. Yeah. So if you are a youth pastor, no matter what age you are, you're invited. And if you're a uh, lead pastor or a pastor or something under 40 yeah. you're also invited Good so deal. it's gonna be a little different than our yeah. other ones we're not having wings no wings what, what? we're changing it up and you'll have to come to figure out what it is all right this is crazy no it's gonna be the best <laughs> ever yes <laughs> so that's happening also but it is at the conference oh center. yeah 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 it's right. at the conference so, center um not a long drive good old bc Anyhow. yeah um we all are also hosting our second annual Youth Pastors Retreat. Yes. Coming up in December. That's December 8th through 10th. Yes. A lot of people were asking, you know, things like that with the transition with Lee and stuff. Uh, we are still going through with the Youth Pastor Retreat. Mm -hmm. So thank God Pastor Don believes in that. Yes. Believes in you guys. We're and I know we totally believe in you guys yeah. and really think it's refreshing for all of us. I agree. To be a part of Youth Pastor Retreat. So uh, you, all the information is online for pricing mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, we are going to have uh, Jason Lamer. He's the pastor at Faith um in Uniontown mm -hmm. so he'll be coming and sharing with us throughout the week um and uh he's just gonna bring a good word yeah. for you guys I mean he's been a youth pastor he ran in youth alive for a few years and right. then he's now a lead pastor so I think he's he's gonna be able to encompass a lot of yeah, ministry speak from a lot of yep. different angles so yeah, that's awesome so um if you want to find out more info on that it's you uh pendelyouth.com slash ypr um and you can also find it right on that home page right. so yeah and uh, our next big event. Oh man! After those winter retreat, let's go. Registration for winter retreat is already open. All the info is online, mm -hmm. and we're ready. Three great weekends, friends. Yes. You don't want to miss. Obviously, you can only pick choose one, I guess. But uh, I mean, you can go. You can go all three. Yeah. But uh, they're going to be awesome. We have Jonathan Rivera, the first one. Holly Davis, the second one. She's our national fine arts mm -hmm. coordinator, and then also Austin Westlake, 
who's also in the national office. He's the uh, discipleship, student discipleship yeah. I think. Yeah, and so. Jonathan Rivera is the DYD of Florida Multicultural District. Good deal. So all three so, great weekends, guys. Yeah, it'll be really, really sweet. So. Um, yeah, there's that's a lot yep. going on. That hey, we want to welcome some new members. Um, Jamin and Bethany. Jamin, I'm Jamin sorry. Jamin and Bethany. It's all good. <laughs> Jamin, welcome back to Pendel, bro. Yeah. You and your family. Brady, welcome. Brady Fair. Yes, welcome. And Mary Bladry. Welcome, guys, welcome, to everybody. the crew. Hey, and there's a big congratulations. This big week. congratulations. Big congratulations to Dalton and Ashlyn Weidman what? on the birth of their first son. Let's go. Little Congrats, Ebby. guys. Ebenezer Aww. Joel. Very cute. But they said Ebby or, or EJ, I think, mm. is what they're going to call him. Got so. it. Uh, yeah, so congratulations. Yes. Good deal. Welcome to the world, <laughs> little Evie. <laughs> yeah. Well, today we have a special guest with us on our broadcast. He comes from the great city of Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> and he is our section rep for the greater Philadelphia yes. area. George Voles has been an awesome part of our team here at Pendel, mm -hmm. and we're excited to have him share this morning. So He's also the one who led that Rocky yeah, yeah, the Step, Rocky Step challenge, challenge for Speed of the Light. So, um, he's been doing yeah. great things. So we're excited that he's a part of our team. Yeah. All right, George. Welcome to the party this morning. Hey, what's up, gang? What's up, Pendel? Woo! Welcome, yeah. George. <laughs> um, did you forget where I was from? At first, Corinne, or what? No, I wanted Joe to say something. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking for a long time. And not just Philly, right? You're in Delco. I'm right? from the 6-0 right. Philadelphia Eagles, right? <laughs> not just the birthplace of our nation, you know? Who cares about that? <laughs> <laughs> we have playoff baseball happening. Man, this is a glorious thing, man. Unbelievable. This must be God. Or day God. out there. The sun is shining brightly behind those clouds upon the city of Philadelphia. Uh, you're wow. awesome george hey what's up guys <laughs> well thanks for joining us george and i know you have uh, a little encouragement to share with the group this morning so take it away i do um first and foremost we had a uh just on the convention this was our first time doing it we weren't apart last year um but that that gps scenario that you had corinne that you just shared um there was a pizza place it's supposed to be seven minutes from the convention center so I put the coordinates in my phone and get there easily within seven minutes. On the way back, I was on the phone, so I had to use my friend's, one of my leader's cars that I used to pick up the pizza. Um, and I put the GPS in the screen on the, her vehicle, on the car. And that eight minute tried sending me 28 minutes down whatever highway it is right there. And I kind of knew my way around that area because that. I'm a big NASCAR fan, and my dad, we would always go to Pocono Raceway, which is right there. And when I'm merging onto the highway and I see Kalahari, the sun, I'm like, we should be going that way. So luckily, that little police uh, off-ramp that they have this shares the highways. If I didn't immediately make that left, it would have taken me 20 minutes down the road to turn before I can turn back. So anyway, crisis averted, but uh, Kalahari was amazing. And uh, anyway, so thanks for putting that together, guys, and I uh, had a great time. But Today, I, I do want to just encourage uh, all you youth pastors out there that are that are on the call and uh, youth leaders. And um, God has, I, I feel, honestly, when I was asked to do this Monday Motivation, just like being asked to preach on a Sunday where my pastor's not out of town, where he's actually there, I feel the same kind of pressure because I'm amongst my peers and, you know, I'm preaching to the choir in a lot of aspects, but uh, I do believe that God put something on my heart. And um, it's, it's, it's one verse that we, many of us probably use this a lot and we come to it, but the story behind it is a little more, uh, a little more heavy than, than we give the verse credit for, but it's first Samuel 15, 22. And um, let me see here. It says, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. And, you know, as, as youth pastors, we all sacrifice, man. The youth ministry is a beast. We sacrifice time with our family. If you have children, we sacrifice our money. We sacrifice our patience. We sacrifice our vehicles, you know. 
And, um, you know, we, we are all happy to do that, I think. And like all in all, we know what we're signing up for. Um, but when it comes to obeying what the Lord wants, um, usually we come to God, I feel, um, in, in, in moments of transition where we want to obey the Lord. But what about when you're in the midst of what you're doing and you feel like you're on the right track, you feel like you have successes? Um, Saul certainly had successes in battle. And, you know, as Samuel brought him this, this word to Saul as him fully not obeying what, what God had commanded of him. And we'll look at that in a second. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, this verse just brought me back to, I remember when I was called into ministry full time. And it was at a youth convention. I was just a chaperone. And um, I'm there and I'm a, I'm a at, at the time, short-lived business owner. I had my hardwood flooring company that I started um, a few years out of high school. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm building this company up, trying to make a name for ourselves, Mantis Hardwood Flooring. You know, the Mantis had a little double meaning, the praying Mantis is a Christian-based company. Um, but also it was the Kung Fu that I was practicing at the time was Seven Star Praying Mantis. So we just loved the Mantis logo. And anyway, 2003 was incorporated in Mantis Hardwood Flooring. So a few years into that, as I'm serving, I get saved at 20 and I'm serving at my church and I was asked to go in this youth convention and it was at the Hershey Center. You know, I don't remember exactly which year it was. Uh, I remember Remnant was the, was the theme and uh, Pat Schatzline was the speaker. And there was a moment of prayer amongst all the students and, and it was just a quiet time of prayer and we're kind of praying just for anything. I, I believe there was some instruction on praying towards specific things for the students, but I'm praying, you know, the will of God for my life. And at the time I'm like, you know, I'm growing this business. We're starting to finally starting to get some decent contracts. And uh, I'm like, Lord, we just need structure. Now we need official payroll. We need, you know, recruit some, some team members as that, as I'm praying, God has given me this vision just kind of in my mind. And I'm around the church that I'm attending just like, there walking around doing stuff i was busy doing stuff as if i was a help and you know god impressed on my heart it's a small church there was only one person on staff at the time and she was like the everything you know she ran the daycare she was the admin she was you know everything you name it, every hat and i felt that god was impressed with me that my pastor needs help that he needs a right-hand man so i i kind of tucked that away we're back at the hotels and students are sharing what God spoke to them. And I just went, pulled the leader aside after all the kids shared, because I wasn't, you know, I was afraid to share it in front of anyone else. And I, and I said, Hey, just letting you know, I feel like God spoke this to me. You know, I was praying for my business and two times, actually, he interrupted my prayer in the sense that, and, and, and showed me this thing. So I'm like, man, I said, I'm just giving, put, giving this to you for some accountability, just in case, you know, cause I know me, I'll go back to life and, you know, I'm not going to think twice about what God may have been impressing on me because I had my own, you know, I'm, I'm trying to build this company. I'm making a name for myself. So um, a few years pass and here I am. Um, the, the youth group did not have an official, um, um, you know, anyone on staff full time for youth ministry. And it was kind of a round robin. You know, we were at the time we, were, we had some people that came through you know, students from Valley Forge, and, you know, this is their aspiration, and this and that, and they feel called, you know, and, uh, you know, the, after two youth pastors came in and, and fell through, it didn't work out, and God started stirring my heart about the youth, and I'm like, Lord, I'm like, I remember, like, you know, my idea is, hey, I want to serve, I want to be on missions, if I'm my own boss, I'm my own leader, I'm, I own my own company, like, even the side jobs I do on weekends, I could use to put and go on mission trips, you know, and this and that. And it's like, I can be my own boss and do what God I feel is calling me to do, which is to serve. And um, when I, I, we, we hit the largest contract that we ever made as a company. And I'm like, Lord, here we go. This is the thing that we need. It's a big contracting company. They do work in Philadelphia, high-end stuff. And we want a huge contract on some of the, the properties that they were working on. And uh, as I'm going in the office that day, um, just stopping in to, you know, some random thing where some other church got charged our convention hotel prices, you know, rooms or whatever. So I'm trying to just straighten that out. And this was like the last phone call, the last 
like check in, like everything's squared away. It's all done, taken care of. And my pastor says, hey, George, how's it going? You know, and I said, good. I said, he's like, how's work? I'm like, it's great. I said, just, uh, you know, we just scored our biggest contract. I said, why do you need me to be your full-time youth pastor? And his jaw just drops. Cause like I said, God had been stirring my heart, but here that evening, apparently with the youth pastors that have come and gone, they were interviewing in the process. And this is unbeknownst to me that they're interviewing youth pastors. And um, like I said, the two that came through didn't work out. And he said all last night that he was sleepless, just wrestling with God and ask God to just throw it in his face. Like, Lord, you need to make the decision. You just, just put in my face who it is to be the, the youth pastor here. And uh, that morning started what is today, full time. I left my company. I knew that was confirmation from God. And um, so even though I had my aspirations and my, you know, when the Lord speaks, you just need to obey. And um, now let me just dive in. And I know we got just a few minutes here. I'm not going to take up a crazy amount of time. A little backstory. Some of you guys know this. When Samuel told Saul about this, Saul was to completely annihilate the Amalekites. Um, God had instructed Samuel to tell Saul that this should happen, that you, like, spare none, right? Spare none. He says, wipe them all out. Uh, and this was 400 years in the making for them attacking the Israelites when they were at their most vulnerable point coming out of Egypt and the Amalekites, you know, so the sin that that the Amalekites committed, God did not forget that even 400 years later. God's, you know, God has a punishment to deal with them, and he was going to use Saul to do it. And here Saul, he goes and he does attack, and uh, and he, he, he did everything that God told him to, to wipe him out, except some exceptions. So he spares the king, Agag, and uh, upon him doing that, his soldiers took the plunder and Saul even gets blamed to the soldiers, saying that, you know, when Samuel comes back, like, for the rebuke, here's the rebuke. It says, early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told that Saul's going to Carmel. And there, Saul sent up a monument for, for himself, for his own honor. Uh, and uh, when Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, what then is this bleeding of the sheep that I hear? What, what's the lowing of the cattle that I hear? So that's just a, to all of us kind of a, a, a little bit of a warning for us uh, as leaders and, and youth pastors that uh, sometimes we all have blind spots to our own sin where, yes, we, we're obeying God's call in our life, but if God is specifically speaking something to us, if we don't heed that, um, we're, you know, even though it was right in his face, you can hear, smell the the disobedience there Saul didn't see it that way Samuel did right so Samuel's just telling Saul like look I told you what God said and he said to spare none you know and here they all you know he, so can, even in Saul's response uh he tries to come up with some excuses he says but I did obey the Lord later in verse 20 Saul said, I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. So even in his response of saying, I did obey the Lord fully, he still admitted right then and there that he spared the king. And because of that, his soldiers, he took the initiative and his soldiers said, well, you know, he didn't carry it all out. So we're taking the plunder, you know, we're taking, which typically in any war, that would be their right. That's kind of how Soldiers were paid in a sense, you know, that they got to take the plunder, but they didn't obey uh, God's word. And then that's when Samuel hits him with that. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. And so even the, that plunder, they took the best of the sheep and the cattle or whatever. They said that they were going to use that to give sacrifices to the Lord, thinking that they're pleasing God with that. But no, what pleases God is our obedience. And um, for me, that was in a time when God spoke to me. And in obedience, I left my company and left my aspirations. That's a little different from now that I'm in ministry and I want to hear from God. And when you feel like there's, like I know Lee probably had to wrestle with this when, you know, his heart was a Pendel and he shared that. And his his aspirations and his and man, what an incredible leader we've had the 
opportunity to have coming out of Doug's years and years, decades of leadership. And then we have Lee coming in and, and just taking the helm and, and, and really doing an incredible job. And his heart is here in Pendel. But when the Lord speaks, he said it was waking him up in the middle of the night. And he was wrestling with this yes to God. And, um, you know, he, he, he wanted the half and half. He said, well, can I do that and still be here? And it's like, no, you, you got to come here. And the, the bottom line is you, you got to obey the Lord. And uh, so I know there's been a lot of transitions that even at the same time, uh, the last call that we had, Lee said, there seems to be when there's one, there's multiple. And we see, you know, people, you know, leaving positions and, you know, going elsewhere. But the truth is that God, God speaks and uh, we just need to heed his voice. And um, that, that's that. That's good. That's good. No, you're spot on, man. Like yeah. obedience is what God wants us to do you know yeah and i have a, a quick quick little example just from convention um just in the leadership role you know so i pulled up as i was reading this it brought me to matthew 5 37 just a simple yes or no anything beyond this comes from the evil one and and you saw in saul's response saul and saul you saw in saul's response that uh his his yes wasn't a full yes. He, he extrapolated and was like, but I, you know, kept the king, reserved him, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, uh, it's almost like that verse that says, with many words, you know, sin is not absent. So like we have all of our excuses. So at convention, um, me as a leader, I was like, okay, we're all, no matter what guys, you're all signing up for workshop. You have no, uh, I did it upon registration. It's free and we're all going there. And there was one senior, the only senior girl that we had in our whole group. And when she asked, it's like, hey, you know, my friends with another group here, you know, uh, can I can I stay back? And in my immediate response, I was like, I was like, yeah, I get that. Because I know her personally. I know the friend, even though she was a leader at, with another group. And I'm just like, oh, and this is your senior year. You know, you're like, you're not going to be starting the Bible club. this year. And I'm totally like given every like in the moment, I just said yes. And I'm not realizing the effect that it would have on my group, which it did. When everyone's there, you said this was mandatory, but then you let one, yep. and then it's like, this is unfair for us all. Now, praise God, they enjoyed the workshops really well, even though they were compelled to go. It was, they, they, they really got a lot out of it. But, um, and I had, I did have the, you know, I acknowledged my, my wrongdoing. I said, you're right. And I had her come back down, but uh, there, there's consequences to our, to our, um, compromise you know and, uh, Saul experienced that and God still you know finished his thing with uh Samuel you know Samuel was used to sacrificing animals but he's never killed anyone but he had to he, he called up Agag uh the king and he thought that like bygones were bygones and he, he he made it out of the war without being destroyed but uh says that Samuel chopped him to pieces right then and there so God's will will be accomplished, but ultimately Saul's disobedience uh, when he died in battle later on, uh, it was a descendant of that king. Yeah. That, that, that potentially killed him. So, um, you know, it just shows that there's, there's consequences to us not uh, obeying the Lord fully. That's true. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's a good really word, good. George. Oh. Good, bro. Wow. What a timely too, man. You know, with mm -hmm. the being obedient you know and, and even share thanks for sharing your testimony your yeah. story because um i don't i don't know if i don't know if everybody's i don't know did any okay what i'm saying is like did you ever just like all right i'm gonna go be a youth pastor bam like i think it's always been a calling mm -hmm. and it's always been something that god stirs in our hearts mm -hmm. honestly like i mean thursday night i was at wrightsville and um that was a question one of the students asked like how do you know mm -hmm. you know the voice of God or whatever. So, um, so you, you, you hit it, bro. You hit it. And that's not just good for here, bro. That's good for everybody, George. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, man. Yeah, that's encouraging you, to George. me. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, and speaking of transition and things like that, um, there are still some open churches looking for yes. youth pastors. So if you feel, man, your heart is being pulled, mm -hmm. um, in a different direction, or, you know, someone who is, is hearing from the Lord about becoming a youth pastor. Um, Evangel Heights Sarver is still open. Harvest Church in Trucksville is still open. Crossroads Community Church in Mechanicsburg is still open. And Central Assembly in Houston is still open, looking for uh, full-time yes. youth pastors. So 
um, yeah, big deal opportunities yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, as we come to a close today, we're going to bring George back on. George, you can unmute yourself. Uh, would you just pray for our group, Amen. for our, our youth pastors and leaders and um, and for the Pendel Youth Network in, in this time? Absolutely. Well, Lord, we just come before you, Lord. Um, we acknowledge, God, that we don't have all the answers, Lord. Uh, we, even our successes, God, we we rally them, and and they're they're for a season, Lord. But um, ultimately, God, you you have you have a bigger picture that's happening, Lord. And we just want to be obedient, Lord, to to your promptings, Lord, to to your calling on our lives, Lord. I pray for uh, every one of these vacancies, God. Um, every one of these areas of ministry, Lord, that not only would you, Lord, because you know, we all have a sense of calling and it's the reach of loss, God, but I pray that you would put burdens on the hearts of, of pastors, youth pastors, leaders for areas, Lord, for people groups, Lord, for, Lord, just a, a burden for where, where there's darkness, Lord, and we want to bring the, the light and the salt of the gospel, Lord. So, Father, I, I pray that you would work all those things out so well and so clear, Lord, that you would make that, that assignment clear, Lord, to those that, that you are prompting. And, Lord, I pray that they would heed your voice. Father, we have so many voices in, in our lives, God, and, and in our spheres of influence, Lord, and uh, Lord, we just want to be obedient, Lord, to, to what you want, Lord. So, Lord, we're, I thank you for Pendel, Lord, for the leadership. Lord, continue to bless Lee and his family, Lord, and their endeavors, God. Just, just bless them mightily, Lord, and uh, Father, the, the one that you're calling here, Lord, to, to take up the mantle, God, we know that you will work all those things out, Lord. Lord, you already have it prepared way in advance. Nothing catches you off guard, Lord. Nothing catches you by surprise, Lord. Your, your plans will be established, Lord. So, Father, I pray that you would just put a burden on our heart, Lord. Bless, bless the, those that are just in the battle right now, Lord, leading these, these students, God, helping lead these, these parents and families, Lord, and, and dealing with these students, Lord. Um, we just all want to be in your plans and in, in your will, Lord. So bless us. And uh, continue to bless the Pendel uh, Network. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, George. And thank everyone for listening and um, tuning in today. Um, yeah, thanks. Well, yep. well next, next week, week we'll oh, be straight. at Thrive. So we won't be uh, having this broadcast, yes. I don't think. But we'll see you but at Thrive. We'll see you there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> George has two authentic wristbands for sale. Auctioning for people. Auction. Like, no, nobody came in with it. Nobody. I mean, people loved it and said, I love this, and this is a great. But I'm being serious. I was serious. <laughs> and the deadline has come and gone. Wow. They're, they're, wow. they're not signed. <laughs> if they were signed yeah. by Lee, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I got to get that signature. Oh, I'll yeah. see. Bring Nick up and find out where he lives and knock up at his door. Yeah. By the way, Lee will be at Thrive. He's going to be one of the guest speakers. Um, oh wow! So if oh, you cool. say goodbye, come, come, uh, come by yeah. Thrive, and yep. uh, yeah. Well, luckily be. that youth pastor gets you in for those that are forty and over. Yep, it's true. Uh huh. That's oh true. yeah. I'm so, over forty, but I am a youth pastor. So <laughs> you're awesome. Dude. All right, everybody. Well, <laughs> All we'll right. see you soon. Bye. See you guys.